Okay. Does your story have a title? Lessons from Grandpa, hey, I guess. Can you help? No. <laughs> no. I just wanted to see what it feels like to sit up here. <laughs> No, I haven't talked at any of the recent funerals. I think you're the one that's been doing that. Okay, I just have a short story, very short, and um, it follows Dell's. For the record. For the record, Catherine, Catherine Dorsey Larrabee, daughter of John and Vita Dorsey. Usually, you tell me not to talk so loud. <laughs> yeah, Carl and Laura, my grandparents. And uh, my short story has to do with when, um, uh, I'm not even sure what I ever called him, grandfather, Carl came to live in Washington, D.C. for a short period of time. And I guess I wasn't quite old enough to know what was really going on all the time. And so maybe that's why some of the, uh, the memories have stuck with me. But um, similar to Dell's story, um, he taught me how to uh, shift a car the gear shift, how to push in the clutch and go through three gears. And he had this maroon Ford, I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, so he would sit in our family's driveway and I'd be in there at the car practicing this thing. Well, I guess that got me excited about driving, even though I was only 12, I don't even think 13 years old. So sometime after that, I convinced my mother that I could drive. So she says, okay, well, uh, when we come back from Burnus and Mary's, when we get to this road, I'll let you try to drive. So I was doing really well, you know, I did what I'd been taught, only I didn't slow down enough when I got to our driveway, and the driveway is between this hedge that was my father's pride and joy and a telephone pole. And uh, luckily I didn't hit the pole, but I went through the hedge, <laughs> made this terrible hole in it, and my father came out of the house. I just jumped out of the car, I ran in the house, and I locked myself in my bedroom, and I left my mother to deal with it. <laughs> Sometime after that, Carl was in our backyard with his guitar, and he sang these wonderful songs. And there's one little thing that stuck with me all these years. I don't know really what he was singing, but there was something about the liquor was spilled on the barroom floor and the cat was out for the night or something like that. <laughs> I have no idea what the song was, but he, he was such an entertainer. While he was in the Washington area, uh, we went to the Masonic Temple in Alexandria, Virginia. And I remember being inside, but mostly I remember that we had to take pictures of him outside and he was wearing khaki pants, khaki shirt, cowboy hat, boots, and he had these sunglasses, and he stood up on this big stone wall in front of the temple, which is huge, and he held his sunglasses out like this, <laughs> and we took pictures, and then we had to have a lot of prints made because he wanted to send them to his friends, right, <laughs> to show that he had been to the Masonic temple. <laughs> Nothing else significant, but... Yeah, yeah. All years, Come up. Can, Come up. I can talk loud. No, you can't. <laughs> it won't be recorded. <clears throat> okay. How about this? Of all the years I, I've been, had been in Washington since I was 15 years old, had never run across anybody that, that I knew in Texas. And this particular day that we were at this Masonic Temple, my father was with us. He ran into about three people he knew. <laughs> and, well, hello, so and so, and I couldn't believe it. All these, all these years, I hadn't seen anybody I knew, and then he should find three people. <laughs> okay, thank you, ma'am.